Bienvenidos a los Cabos México. Behind me is Cabo San Lucas, and today we're going to explore the southern tip of Mexico's Baja California Peninsula. Los Cabos Mexico. If you like to play in the surf, relax on the beach, shop and party, then head to this desert paradise on the sea. Los Cabos is a municipality located 1,000 miles south of San Diego in the Mexican state of Baja California Sur. There are three main areas that make up Los Cabos, the more traditional relaxed town of San Jose del Cabo, the 18 mile stretch of beaches and desert along the coastal highway known as the Los Cabos Corridor, and our first stop, Cabo San Lucas. What was once a quiet fishing village has become one of Mexico's hottest tourist destinations. And by hot, I mean I was really sweating a lot. I'm here in August, which I hear is the hottest month of the year. It also happens to be the low point for tourism, and I don't think that's a coincidence. Cabo San Lucas is located on a bay with a beautiful view of the Lands End Peninsula, which features its most famous natural rock formation, El Arco, or the Arch. There are tons of water taxis, glass bottom boats, booze cruises, fishing tours, etc., willing to take you out to the arch for a photo op. But that's not the real reason to come to Cabo. Now right here, this is the real reason to come to Cabo. The beaches and the sun. Can I have a margarita? Margarita. Si, sí, senor. There are miles and miles of beaches lining the Los Cabos shore, and you can find the perfect beach for your taste. Like the quiet sands of Playa Somar on the Pacific coast, or the hustle and bustle of Playa Medano, Cabo's busiest beach. At Playa Medano, you can grab a beach chair at one of the many restaurants and hotels on the bay and order cervezas and margaritas until long after the sun has set. Downtown Cabo San Lucas is party central for Los Cabos and features some great clubs like the epic partying at El Squid Row and Sammy Hagar's Cabo Wabo Cantina. Cabo specializes in peddling sin in many forms including lots of strip clubs which tend to be barely disguised brothels and an overwhelming amount of drug dealers offering to sell you blow blow weed weed. There are lots of outdoor activities in Los Cabos like snorkeling, deep sea fishing, parasailing, and jet skiing. There are also tons of options for shopping from the souvenir shops that line the streets around the marina with their aggressive salespeople to the more laid back modern shopping mall experience of Puerto Paraiso. If you are feeling hungry, then there are tons of great restaurants and taquerias with delicious seafood, Mexican food, and cuisines from all over the world. But when reaching for your wallet, remember, this is not cheap Mexico. Los Cabos hosts some very wealthy visitors, and although you can find a few good deals, Prices are on par with some of the more expensive U.S. cities. After thoroughly exploring Cabo San Lucas, I decided to venture out and see the rest of Los Cabos. All right, I just rented my scooter and I'm about to head out. There's only one road from Cabo San Lucas to San Jose del Cabo, a 30 kilometer stretch of highway known as the Corridor. It travels along the coast with the Sea of Cortez to the south and miles of empty desert to the north. Many expensive resorts and golf courses line the corridor and are popular vacation spots for the rich and famous. But I took my scooter in the other direction, away from the population. I'm taking a little detour. I'm out in the middle of the desert, just me and my scooter. And as you can see, it just goes on for miles. Los Cabos sits in a harsh, arid environment, and you don't have to travel very far from the path to leave society behind. The lack of fresh water made Los Cabos an unappealing, almost uninhabitable place for Mexicans and Europeans to settle for centuries. On the ocean side of the highway, my friends and I stopped at Zipper's Beach to try out the surfing. Water temp is perfect. Oh man, slightly below bath water. How are the waves? It was a fun, playful. Los Cabos has some great surf breaks, but make sure to do some research beforehand or ask the local surf shops for advice 
Otherwise, you might find yourself surfing in a dangerous situation. The whole ocean is covered with rocks out there, so it's pretty rough on your feet. You have to go down a ways, which we found out later, to surf over where there's not rocks. After surfing, it was on to San Jose del Cabo for some more exploration. I continued down the highway, pushing the scooter to its limits, and still not keeping up with traffic. I just took this scooter from Cabo San Lucas to San Jose del Cabo. It was a harrowing experience on the highway. I don't recommend it. San Jose del Cabo is the other major town in Los Cabos, and it represents a quieter, more traditional Mexican town. It has a laid-back town square featuring the Iglesia San Jose, a replica of the original mission church that the town was founded around. Well, I just took my initial walk through San Jose del Cabo, and I gotta tell you, it was uh, way more relaxed than uh, Cabo San Lucas. As you're walking down the street, you don't have like 5,000 people trying to sell you stuff. Even though it's more relaxed than Cabo San Lucas, that doesn't mean that it doesn't have plenty of shopping, restaurants, and activities for tourists to enjoy. We have canopy, safari, swimming with dolphins. Uh, we also have uh, the snorkeling, ATVs, wave runners. A lot of fun here. I didn't get to stay in San Jose del Cabo as long as I would have liked because I had to return my scooter. But I had a tasty, affordable lunch at La Serena and enjoyed strolling through the shops at Boulevard Mijares, where you can find some cool Mexican crafts as well as the standard trinkets that are found throughout all of Mexico's tourist destinations. Even though Los Cabos is a fun place, there are still a few downsides to it. Everyone is working aggressively to get your money. Some of the beaches have roaming vendors that disrupt your relaxation. There are aggressive timeshare salesmen around town that hound you as you walk around, especially if you're a couple who is over 35 years of age. Some people will be put off by the amount of drug dealers and strip clubs that are found in downtown Cabo San Lucas. Furthermore, you should buy services from reputable companies that are mentioned in some of the more popular travel guides. I learned my lesson the hard way when my scooter salesman turned out to be really shady. I just got screwed out of about 20 bucks and I've been waiting here for two hours to get it back. So we'll see if I ever do. Don't worry, I got my money back, but I did have to get the police involved. There is construction everywhere and Cabo is expanding at an astronomical rate. My final concern is the environmental impact that this growing town is having on this delicate, dry landscape. It's hard to justify multiple, luxurious, thirsty golf courses in the middle of a desert. In Cabo's defense though, I've heard that they use gray water to irrigate golf courses and all new resorts are self-sufficient with their own desalinization and sewage treatment. Overall, I enjoyed my time in Los Cabos. It's the perfect destination for hanging out at the beach, drinking a margarita, getting outdoors, and partying through the Mexican night. I'd like to thank TripFilms.com for helping me get to Los Cabos, Mexico. If you'd like to learn how Trip Films can pay for your travel expenses, head to their website and check out their Trip Blogger program. After that, head to my website, StrayCompass.com, a travel adventure site for more great videos and articles. Thanks for watching. I'm James Knott. Adios.